Hello everyone. So by now we know about one theory of chemical bonding called the Cossels and Lewis's theory based on the octet rule. Now this theory had a number of drawbacks. The biggest drawback being that this theory does not talk about the structures or shapes of the molecules, right? So to predict the correct structures and shapes of molecules, two pairs of scientists, where the first pair is Sidgwick and Powell, and the second pair is Nyom and Gillespie, gave a theory called balance shell electron pair repulsion theory, in short called as V S E P R, and pronounced as Jasper. Now this is the theory that we will study in today's class about chemical bonding. Now let us take our first step to understand this Vesper theory by learning about the assumptions or postulates of Vesper theory where the first assumption is that the shape or structure of a molecule is decided by the number of electron pairs present in the valence shell of the central atom of the molecule where these number of electrons include the bonded electron pairs and the non-bonded electron pairs. Now we know that these electron pairs move in a space around the central atom, right? And this space is called electron cloud. Now because electrons are negatively charged, this electron cloud is also negative, right? Now there are a number of electron pairs around the central atom, right? And each of these electron pairs repel each other because they are negatively charged. Now in Lewis's theory, we learned to write molecules on a piece of paper, right? And this piece of paper is in two dimensions, the x and the y axis only. It does not have a z axis, right? But the world we live in has three dimensions and molecules actually exist in real world. So the three dimensional aspect of molecules was taken care of by the next assumption, which tells us that the valence shell of a central atom has to be of a spherical shape or has to be a sphere. And all these electron pairs are restricted to move on the surface of the sphere at maximum distance from each other. Why maximum distance? Because they repel each other because of the negative charge. Now the next point in this theory tells us that the repulsions between lone pair and lone pair are the highest, followed by repulsions between lone pair bond pairs and least repulsions are there between bond pairs and the next point in this theory tells us that if we have multiple bonds like double bonds and triple bonds, we will treat these bonds as single bonds just for predicting the structure. Remember they are not in reality single bonds, but just to predict the structure, we will consider them as single bonds. And the next point comes from these bonds itself, which says that a double bond will repel more than a single bond and a triple bond will repel the most. Aye. And finally moving on to the final point in this theory which tells us that even if a structure is represented by a number of resonance structures, the Vesper theory can predict the correct structure of such molecules also. So using all these rules or assumptions we can predict the shape or structure of a molecule using Vesper theory. Next, I want all of you to focus your attention on one particular point which talks about repulsions between the different pairs of electrons. So why on earth is this order of repulsions like this? Why on earth these lone pairs repel the most? Well, to understand that, let us take a molecule of ammonia which contains a lone pair and three bond pairs. Now from this molecule of ammonia, take this nitrogen hydrogen bond. If you carefully see in this bond, we have a pair of electrons shared between nitrogen and hydrogen. And this pair of electron is pulled by the positively charged nucleus of nitrogen and also the positively charged nucleus of hydrogen. So in a way, this lone pair is pulled by both of these atoms and this lone pair is restricted to moves just between in these two atoms and cannot go anywhere else. Right. So can you see how small is this area? Now 
let us keep this aside and take this lone pair in ammonia now if you see here this lone pair is bound by only one atom that is the nitrogen atom right so it is pulled by the positively charged nucleus of just nitrogen so it has a larger area to move around and because of this this lone pair occupies a large space around the central atom that is nitrogen so now we can make two conclusions the first conclusion is that a bond pair occupies less space whereas a lone pair occupies more space. and precisely because the lone pair occupies more space and its electron cloud is large it comes more in contact with other electron pairs and repels them more now the question that arises here is that why do lone pairs occupy more space as compared to bond pairs well to understand that take this nitrogen hydrogen now convert nitrogen and hydrogen to two walls and the bonds to two springs and the lone pair to a ping pong ball and attach this ping pong ball to these two walls with the help of these springs next you pull this ping pong ball towards one of the walls and release it what do you notice what happens here well here this ping pong ball just moves to and fro between wall and cannot move any else right so it is restricted to move in between these two walls next remove one of the walls and one of the spring now again pull the ping pong ball and release it now did you notice what happened now this ping pong ball is moving in a larger area right so the ping pong ball attached to two walls is the case of bond pair whereas the ping pong ball attached to only one wall is the case of pair so in short this vesper theory tells us that to just find out the number of electron pairs around the central atom in a molecule arrange these electron pairs in three dimensions as much far apart from each other so that the repulsions are minimum and because these repulsions are minimum the energy of the structure is also minimum and you know right when the energy of the structure is minimum the structure is stable and this most stable structure is the correct structure of the molecule now after understanding what vesper theory is now let us use that vesper theory to predict the shapes or geometries of molecules of the type a b n where a is the central atom b is the other atoms surrounding the central atom called ligands and m is the number of ligand make sure and understand that abm does not contain any lone pair so we will be discussing further geometries of molecules that do not contain any lone pairs so now let us start our discussion by discussing about a molecule that has two bond pair which has ab2 formula right so number of ligands are also now that bond pairs arranged around a central atom will look somewhat like right now vesper theory tells us that we have to arrange all the electron pairs as much far apart from each other right so how much far we can move these electron pairs well to understand that just fix this electron pair and try and move the other electron pair as much far apart from the other one right so do what do you think what is the maximum distance whether these two electron pairs are at maximum distance at 60 degree or 90 degree or 120 degree or 180 degree what do you think quite obviously these electron pairs are farthest apart at 180 now if you replace the central atom as a and the other atoms as b and join b to a to b you will get a straight line right so because you get a straight line the geometry or shape of this molecule is here now let us move on to the next case where we have d bond pairs and the formula is ab these bond pairs arranged around the central atom will look somewhat like this right now can you tell me what arrangement will have the maximum distance between these bond pairs 
well to find that arrangement consider this molecule like a circle and we need to cut this circle into three equal half right when we do that each of the part will have a 120 degree angle because 360 divided by 3 is 120 degrees right and that is the most stable arrangement which will have maximum distance between the bond pairs and each of the bond pairs will have a 120 degree now if you replace the central atom by a and bond pairs with atoms b you will get this structure right now if you join all the b atoms you will get a triangle and this triangle is in the plane of the paper. So, this geometry is called triagonal planar. And that is the geometry of a molecule which has the formula AB3 with no lone pairs. So now, let us add another bond pair to make the total bond pair value as 4 and the formula as AB. Now, this structure is quite exciting to predict. And why it is so? Well, stay with me. We can arrange four bond pairs around the central atom like this. So what will be the most stable arrangement with all the bond pairs as far apart from each other? Is it at an angle of 360 divided by 4, which is 90 degrees like this? Well, the answer is no, because now we have to think in three dimensions. Yes, not only X and Y axis, but also Z axis. When we think in three dimensions, the most stable arrangement comes like this. Where these bond pairs have an angle between them that is 109.5 degrees. Now if you replace with A and B atom and join all the B atoms, we will get a structure like this. Now this structure is called a tetrahedron. Right. And this tetrahedron can also be looked at like this where you can clearly see the A and B atoms too, right? So we can see this tetrahedron through these two. And because the structure is tetrahedron, this geometry is called tetrahedron. Therefore, AB4 will have a tetrahedral geometry. Next, let us increase the bond pairs to 5 and the molecules formula as AB. Now what you will do here, because the bond pairs arranged around the central atom look like so what will be the most stable arrangement? Well, stay with me on this. Place the bond pair in the form of a triangle like this. And place one bond pair above the triangle and the other bond pair below the triangle. Here notice that the angle between bond pairs in the triangle is 120 degree, right? This we have already seen in the triagonal planar geometry, right? But the bond angle between the bond pair in the triagonal plane and the upper bond pair and lower bond pair, that angle is 90 degrees. So we have two angles. Right. Now if you replace by A and B atom and join all the B atoms in the triangle, we get a triagonal plane. Right. Now, first if you join the B atoms in the triangle to the upper B atom, we will get a pyramid type shape right same if you join the triangle b atoms to the lower b atom we will get another pyramid so we have two pyramids and a triangle so this geometry is called triagonal bipyramidal by because there are two pyramids so let us move on to the case where we have six bond pairs and the formula as a b now the most stable way in which we can arrange six bond pairs around a central atom is here, carefully notice that we have four bond pairs in the plane in the form of a square and one bond pair above and one bond pair below this square. If you notice, the bond angle between the bond pairs in the square is 90 degrees. And even the bond angle of one bond pair in the square and the other upper bond pair is 90 degrees. And the same is with the below angle bond pair also. That is also 90 degrees. So all angles here are 90 degrees. Now, if you replace with A and B atom, then let us understand what can be the geometry of this. First, join all the B atoms in the square. Next, join the upper and below B atoms with the B atoms in the square. 
Can you still tell me what will be the name of this geometry? Well, to understand what will the name of this geometry be, we have to see how many faces this structure has. If you keep on rotating this structure and count the faces of this structure, it will come out to be eight faces. And because this structure has eight faces, it is called an octahedron. Hedron means faces and octa means eight. And the geometry or shape is called octahedral geometry. So now moving on to the final case where we have seven bond pairs and the formula is A7. Now this case is not important for students studying for the school exam. But this case is asked in competitive exam. So listen to me. So if we were to arrange seven bond pairs around the central atom, then the arrangement will look somewhat like this, where five bond pairs are arranged in the form of a pentagon and two bond pairs are above and below this pentagon. Now if you replace with A and B atoms and join all the A and B atoms, you will notice that two bond pairs in the pentagon have an angle of 72 degrees. Why 72 degrees? Well, quite obviously, when a circle is divided into five equal parts as here, we get 360 divided by 5 as 72 degrees. But the angle between the bond pair above and below the plane with the bond pair in the pentagonal plane is 90 degrees. Now coming to the next part. What do you think we can call this? We have a pentagon. And above that pentagon, we have a pyramid. And even below that pentagon, we have another pyramid. Right. So we have two pyramids with a pentagonal base. Quite obviously, this symmetry is called pentagonal by pyramidal. So in today's class, we learned what can be the shapes or geometry of molecules without lone pair. In the next class, we will apply these general concepts into predicting the shapes or geometries of real molecules which do not have lone pairs. But before we do that, let's do a quick recap of what we have learned today. In Vesper theory, the structure is made so that there are minimum repulsions between the electron pairs around the central atom. Repulsions between lone pair lone pair are maximum followed by lone pair bond pair and bond pair bond pair repulsion. Some general geometries of the molecule ABM without lone pairs is given in this table. 